Today I'm going to talk about perturbation theory and I'm going to look at a linear second order differential equation which we can all solve but that is good because if we know the solution to this we can actually see whether it works or not okay so if you solve this differential equation and I'm going to have some boundary conditions y0 equals 1 and y0 the first derivative also equals 1 we're going to solve this we can solve this very simply by the characteristic equation which gives you lambda plus minus i and that gives you then as a generic solution y we assume it's dependent on the time yt is a cosine t plus b sine t okay that is the generic solution based on the lambdas here now we're going to fill in the boundary conditions so if we do y0 we expect it to get 1 out of it and that means immediately that a equals 1 and now we're going to differentiate this equation so we now have yt equals cosine t because a is 1 after all plus b sine t we're going to differentiate this equation and we get minus sine t plus b cosine t and now we're going to fill out 0 that has to be 1 this piece disappears and we immediately see that b equals 1 and therefore our equation equals yt equals cosine t plus sine t okay so this is somehow what we need to get to now if you do perturbation theory what you will get is you will never get an exact result you get a slow uh, usually series that tend toward that result so if you do Taylor expansion for instance around zero of this solution what you will get is the following you get 1 minus t squared over t 2 factorial etc etc right so these are the first two terms those are the terms I'm going to reproduce with my perturbation theory and for the sign part it's t minus t3 3 factorial etc okay so these are the terms we expect to get if we do perturbation theory now how does perturbation theory work we're going to assume the following we're going to assume an equation that looks like this where epsilon is a small value it could be one in this case it will be one in front of y and initially we're going to assume that this is not there and then we start with a differential equation that's only a second order derivative which results in zero and what you do with perturbation theory you assume at some point that yt equals a y0 plus an epsilon times a y1 plus an epsilon squared plus a y2 etc all the way up to n okay so this is the type of equation we expect and then the y0 is a solution to this differential equation up to epsilon in accuracy okay so why don't we fill this one out and put it in here and see what happens okay so we will do that and then we will see that we will get y0 yeah this is t I'm probably gonna not put t in there anymore plus epsilon y1 plus epsilon squared y2 etc etc right plus epsilon times y which is y0 plus y1 times epsilon plus y2 times epsilon squared etc etc and that needs to be zero so now let's collect the epsilon terms so we get first y double equals zero that's our first equation here yeah because all the epsilon powers need to be zero for the second equation we get y1 double if we take epsilon out we have a y1 double here and we have a y0 here plus y0 
and that also has to be zero yeah and there are no other terms everything is higher in order so let's do one more y2 double plus y1 if you take y2 double plus epsilon times epsilon epsilon squared plus y1 equals zero so if you go all the way down you get a yn double plus yn minus one equals zero so all these differential equations we now have to solve but they are really simple okay so let's start with the first one y zero double that's in t for clarity equals zero let's start with that we can integrate this thing twice and we get y zero in t equals alpha t plus beta okay because first time integration is a constant which is alpha in this case and then integrate again you get alpha t plus beta so let's now fill out the boundary conditions okay so y zero equals one so that means immediately if you do this that the result is beta so beta equals one in this case yeah now if we differentiate this one one time you get alpha and if you fill out zero it needs to be one so that immediately means that alpha is one so our first order approximation equals now t plus one okay and if you look at the series here of the result of the real true result if you would calculate it out like we can because it's a very simple equation you see that the first two terms are already there one is there and t is there okay so now let's continue let's try to calculate y1 double y1 double differentiated equals minus y0 t equals minus t minus 1 okay now let's integrate that twice and we get y1 t you integrated this the first time you get t squared over 2 you do it again you get t to the third so it's minus t to the third divided by 3 factorial okay and if you take the next term it's minus t squared 2 factorial okay and now the next result is yt so let's calculate yt which is at this point y0 plus epsilon y1 where epsilon equals 1 now you fill that out you get t plus 1 minus t3 over 3 factorial minus t2 over 2 factorial and we can slightly rewrite that into 1 minus t squared 2 factorial plus more terms we don't know them yet but for now it's this plus t minus t3 over 3 factorial okay so now you can see that yt is a little bit more accurate we have the first two terms of this cosine as well as the sine determined right now right and we can go one step further let's do a last step let's do uh, y2 so we go y2 according to this equation that's minus y1 y1t y1t is this this one and eh? that equation and you have to integrate that twice again so now you get t3 over 3 factorial because it's a minus plus t2 over 2 factorial and that gives you y2t if you integrate this thing twice you get to the fifth this becomes 5 factorial and this becomes 4 4 factorial that's y2 so now that's y2 we can go back to yt which is y0 plus epsilon y1 plus epsilon squared y2 equals now y0 plus y1 epsilon is 1 plus y2 and that is y1 t plus 1 plus uh, y0 sorry y1 is 
minus t3 3 factorial minus t2 2 factorial plus y2 plus t5 5 factorial plus t4 4 factorial okay and if you write that out in that slightly different form again you get mi 1 minus t squared 2 factorial plus t4 4 factorial this term right plus maybe more terms later on plus and then we get t minus t3 3 factorial and then the one that's remaining is t5 5 factorial plus maybe other terms right and you can see that if t is small here and that's the assumption because if t is small then this portion is small and that is when you can do perturbations you cannot do perturbations if they're really large compared to this value because because then it will blow up so that doesn't work but if it's small like in this case you can work it out and you see that it works so this is very close already to a cosine t if t is relatively small yeah, usually with the pendulum for instance we take t equals zero and then we assume that cosine t equals one and sine t equals t right so this is a very good approximation already for relatively small t and here we have sine t okay i think that's really cool that with a set of really simple differential equations you can come up with these these series and you can use this for really complex nonlinear functions so in my next video i'm going to approach that i'm going to go to the uh, the aries function um, which generates hypergeometric uh, solutions to a nonlinear differential equation so for the next time i'm going to look at something like this y double x plus x y x which you can already see is nonlinear equals zero so the next time we're going to solve something like this and we're going to use similar methodology to come up with uh, a series approximation of this differential equation okay i think this is a great time to stop if you like this video please like and please subscribe and i'll see you in the next one